what do you need? This, 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 and these. Or not exactly like this until you get something in your eye, fall off your head and break. While doing this project, you'll lose life sauce, hot fluid, and you'll look like a genius, but also a wuss in front of your partner. Alright, let's get this project started. This is your basic liquid tote, used for chemicals and food grade material. You can get these free to up to 100 bucks on average. To remove this bottom platform, to do it actually properly, you need a special tool like this. But better yet, just pull out the Ryobi and give it a couple of zingity zings. I apologize that this isn't actually video clips of me doing this project, it's just pictures, but it's better than nothing. I cut this section out here for easier access for shoveling it out or for dumping heavier pails. So toss this thing up on a stand or saw horses for the next step where you want to actually wrap it with chicken wire. The bigger the roll, the cheaper it is, but the harder it is to work with. Use the tin snips to cut the chicken wire, but you can also use the tin snips to cut the tie wire, but I recommend using wire cutter plier combo. These gloves work great to wipe life sauce on, but apparently if you wear them, they prevent life sauce from leaking. The trickiest part of this entire project was wrapping this cage with the chicken wire. I found that when you're trying to secure it, the bugger tried to keep rolling up like the world's worst fruit roll up. So you had to actually stick some tools or kind of secure it for a bit while you twisted the tie wire around to secure it to the cage. Unfortunately, the roll of chicken wire isn't tall enough to do one wrap around the cage, so you have to do it twice, which creates an overlapping layer, which is, you know, a little bit better because it does add a little bit extra strength. So these things here, I'm not sure what they're called, but they are on a pallet that protects electronics and other stuff during shipping. I tried googling what they were, and uh, I literally got recipes for barbecues, so I can't exactly show you, but I made a shed out of one of them. Now the chances of you finding these exact things to use that I am using are slim, but it's just kind of show you what I'm using to strengthen the top of this thing since I cut a door opening in it and it had a hole for where the original tap for the tote was. To secure these items together, I'm using this, what's commonly used for holding up furnace ducting, um, some self-drilling or it's commonly called self-tapping screws, but wife calls them pecker heads. Fitting these items together, I almost broke my fingers, but I severely sprained them. Now, obviously, to create some of this stuff, um, there's some things I didn't mention, like hinges and latches and screws and stuff like that. And uh, these cross members I actually use from a broken gazebo. This is a tomato cage back from when the dinosaurs used to garden. I'm using it to create an air chamber inside of the compost bin. Chicken wire, tie wire, metal cage, wrap it, done. The next step for this air chamber is to toss her up on the table and then get some weed wrap or garden mesh or whatever you want to call it, wrap it around the bugger. The reason why you want this central air chamber in a big bin like this is so that things will evenly decompose from the inside out. Pretty much all it does is lets oxygen in and out and same with moisture. So again, I'm going to use these non-edible black ribs for another project, which is the door. Obviously I cut out the corners, I mocked it up the way I wanted, used some scrap metal to secure it all together with those pecker head screws. And then I use those cross members again, the top pieces from the gazebo, wrap it in chicken wire, throw a latch on it. Um, on the bottom there, I didn't really show it, but I used the same strapping to hold up the furnace ducting as hinges. Now here it is in the backyard in place where I want it. We use the straw to create a top layer so it doesn't just stink and look like trash. And the reason why we want a bin like this is we get a lot of wildlife like deer and moose and stuff like that in our yard. Well that's that project, but what did I do with the plastic tote that came out of it? Here you go, we store gravel, straw, all sorts of stuff in it. No, that's not a cannon. Another thing we did with the extra black ribs that you can't eat and the chicken wire we had left is we made some garden trellis nettings and uh, it was great to decorate and vine your plants on. Since our compost bin is 46 kilometers away in the backyard and 96 feet of snow, this is what we do during the winter to compost. 
We save all of our cat litter containers and we store our compost in them over the winter. Now once it gets full, we toss it on the deck. These things stack great. Once it uh, thaws out in spring, then we charge our garden with it. And the extra in the big compost bin.